in today's video we'll be unboxing the hp pavilion laptop that's right if you guys do not know this laptop has four efficiency cores and eight performance cores making an overall 12 core laptop and a small body so today we'll be answering the question is it worth its value in performance by benchmarking it doing a complete review and unboxing it so that way you know if it's worth buying or not so let's get right into it okay so let's start with the unboxing first so you can actually see here's the actual packaging for it nothing too fancy about it the actual front side looks pretty clean you can see right here with the hp on it also you've got the basic information about the specs and stuff right here and then yeah this is the back side not much else to be said about it so yeah also the price of this thing is currently at total of 959 dollars so this is i got off of micro center well you can probably get it from somewhere else but i got it from micro center for cheap so that's good now let's actually start unboxing this though so there we go we got the box opened up from the top side so let's pull it on out originally i was trying to open it from the back but that was just not the move opening it from the back was not the best way to do it so here is the laptop and then it comes with some stuff too which i'm gonna leave the laptop there let's pull the other stuff on out you can actually see the little cubby it is going to have the power cable, of course, for the power brick, and also the adapter that goes into the wall for it. So there's everything for the actual like power cable. It's all in that one spot. And now what we got here is the actual laptop in itself. So we can just pull this out of here, and that way we can actually get the laptop on out. They got some nice packaging, so it keeps it in place. So you can actually see it's very, very tough in some parts, and it's also cardboard, so it's not the easiest kind of like straight up open up. But there we go here is the laptop and it's gonna have a manual and some other stuff but we don't really want that we just want the actual laptop here here is the laptop you see the front side the back side where the air vents are for the actual fans and there we go and now if we open it up you can actually see how it looks like it looks pretty nice they have a little thing that place so the keyboard doesn't get dirty and this is how it looks when it comes right out of the box. Mine's a bit dusty. I guess it's just because it was in packaging for a while. But you can, of course, it's got the i7 sticker and all the graphics for integrated graphics. And that's practically about it. So the next thing I need to do is actually set this on up. So let me quickly do that real quick before we start benchmarking. So before we get in setting this on up, let's actually show you guys the I.O. you have on this. So first of all, you actually have the power area for your actual volt and also a USB area and also a USB-C. Yes. No, actually, that's not even a USB-C thing. It's just an empty slot for some reason. So yeah, just ignore that. That was not USB-C. So that's out on one side. Then the other side, you have actually an HDMI out. So if you want to plug this into a monitor, you can do so. You also have a USB-C. I'm pretty sure this one's actually going to be USB be three or they might just both be i have to double check i'm gonna assume for the time being they're usb three and then of course we have a usb c cable so that we have really fast connections if you want to do something with that you have a lot of options and also finally you have yourself the actual analog adapter for headphones so this is very nice because i know a lot of devices are actually removing analog so it's good to have this on your laptop just because maybe you want headphones you can plug in your headphones and you don't have these bluetooth at all which is always awesome and that's pretty much it about it there's nothing else for io on it for the time being also one more cool thing i want to quickly just point out is that the actual power button for the actual laptop is actually right here so you have the power button here you have a mute button you have a minus the audio button an increase audio button skip a track go back a track pause keyboard and then of course airplane mode and delete key up top so you have a lot of things on the top side of it increasing brightness lower brightness and etc so yeah this has a lot of just versatility right at the top i kind of think it's really cool that the actual power key is right here so it's not usually like it's usually like right here or that it's somewhere else on the computer or up top right but they actually place it right on the keyboard so you gotta be kind of be careful just in case you mess up and actually push this while you're typing something up but uh yeah i think it's just a really nice spot and also it does really stand out because it's the only thing with the lighting on it there okay so the laptop is set up you can actually see right here i actually have it connected to a monitor that's how you're seeing the actual full gameplay so what i'm actually doing is just running basically from the hdmi out on the actual laptop into the monitor in itself uh, so that way you can actually see right here it is. So I actually have it running through a capture card, so that's why how I would capture it. But if you want to, you can literally just hook this to a monitor setup so you can work on the laptop in itself, and then you'll have a bigger screen with it. So that way if you have it folded and you have a separate keyboard, you can just plug a keyboard in, work from afar. You know what I'm saying? So that is cool. But that's not what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do next is actually test this thing out. First of all, I actually do want to show you guys the actual specs of this laptop. So let's check that out. We'll actually just go in the task manager to quickly look at that and you'll actually be able to see what's inside of this 
So this is also running Windows 11 too. So if the UI looks different than your normal Windows, you can know why now. So you can see the basics is just ring off of it right off the bat. I didn't install anything of yet. I'm gonna install the uh, PC benchmark thing we're gonna do in just a bit. But you can see right here, that it has overall 12 cores. So actually, yeah, yeah, 12 cores and 16 threads. So don't forget, this is four efficiency cores and also eight performance cores. So you have 12 cores overall. And of course it has 16 gigs of memory, boosting up to 32 megahertz at base. So that's pretty nice, nothing too crazy. And also there's an M.2 with actually 500 gigabytes. So you could probably install another M.2 or even an uh, SSD into this for later so that we actually have access to that. Actually, I just said this was an M.2 that's installed. This is actually an SSD. Sorry if I confused you, not trying to do that. And of course, you know, you have the internet and all that stuff. And you also have the integrated graphics on this actual CPU since it doesn't actually have a GPU in it. So that is awesome. So what we need to do now is actually test this. So what I'm gonna do is get my application on here and then we're gonna run a PC benchmark. Okay, so the benchmarking is done. We don't need to worry about that anymore. We can actually see the specs now. This. So this is more of a desktop gaming. It's not gonna really do too much. Workstation is gonna be pretty decent. Nothing too crazy. You're definitely gonna be able to just run some basic activities on this. So you can actually see with the graphics intense, the pretty decent overall, the performance is above expectations, which not the surprise. The actual processor is outstanding, single core, and also the CPU. Yeah, just because of like the 12 core performance plus the high thread count is insane. Now, the big question is, yeah, the SSD also did excellent too beyond expectations, so that's nice. The thing with this is though, even though like it performed really good, you gotta keep in mind, if you're gonna install any game on this, I wouldn't probably play any games on this, but if you were, I would definitely recommend installing a one terabyte M.2 into this so that we have mass storage. The CPU did perform outstanding, the actual GPU integrated did okay, didn't do anything insane. So you don't want to probably use the integrated GPU uh, for gaming at all. So not that surprising though. You could probably do light applications with it though, depending on what your use case is. The uh, SSD, of course, did amazing. Uh, the one I actually, this is the secondary SSD right here. This is the one I actually have for the actual hardware that we're using to run our actually test mark. And also the memory did really good too, which was outstanding. And that's pretty much everything with it. So I tested this computer on doing a few things. First of all, running a game like CSGO was not the move because the integrated GPU just could not do it. However, productivity applications such as video editing worked perfectly fine, especially with Cyberlink, which specializes with Intel CPUs. So I was able to run that perfectly smooth. Now for Photoshop, I was having some problems here and there, but it was just more like if I actually ran two applications at the same time, they're productivity. So I would not recommend running actually uh, Photoshop and also an editing software unless like you close one save it for later and just finish up and work on the other thing That's what you can do. And so yeah, I don't know why it was acting so weird in Photoshop I think it was just because it was being a bit iffy right out of the gate and I had two applications going But that should be not a problem because it has 12 cores and also it's like four efficiency eight performance So I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that though Everything else though about it was perfectly fine. I actually had a lot of fun editing on it now, if you want to know how the speakers actually performed, they actually performed really, really well. At 100, they were a bit iffy, but when they actually got in between 70 to also 50, it was perfectly fine. 100 was kind of weird, but you could do that. I'll actually show you some footage of it actually at 100 first and going to 70 to 50. What you think, what you think about when you go into a fire? So the speakers actually were really, really good. At 100, they're actually really nice if you're just listening to some rock music. But I definitely say 70s is the best overall. And then 50s, kind of just like if you want to play chill, you can. The speakers on this are really, really nice. But that is, of course, the HP Pavilion laptop. If you guys enjoy this review and unboxing, then make sure to smash the like button, get subscribed to MSA or tech content. And don't forget to check us on Twitch. We do stream there, of course, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Then the link down below to our tech channel. If you want to ask me any more questions about this laptop, feel free to. Until then, I'll see you guys in another video. Tech Grant, out.